What's going on? Justin here from Modern Mixing and today I have another quick little tip for you and it's in regards to a minimalistic approach to mixing vocals. So I think this is important because you know I've done some tutorials and there's other people out there who have done tutorials and they focus on you know all these cool crazy techniques and this and that and you know I myself have included in that I try to show as many different things that I possibly can that I've learned on my own just through trial and error and I think are kind of cool and people would like. Uh, but in this uh, particular tutorial, it kind of really goes back to the basics as to, you know, do you actually really need to do something to the record? And while I was going through this one, a situation came up where I was doing the verses and there's lots of problems in the vocals. I had to fix this, fix that. But when I got to the bridge, it just sort of fit nice, you know, like it just kind of worked. It just sat there and I didn't, I didn't hear any, you know, major problems that I had to fix or work on. So again it, it was more of a decision where I'm like okay well they sound pretty good already so why am I going to try and reinvent the wheel and then sit here and try to tweak them into oblivion and then potentially destroy the performance so that's basically what this video is about it's about you know you don't always have to do something to the vocals if it already works or already sounds good now in this case I did do some things because there were tiny little tweaks that I had to make but um, minus these are the effects but minus those because those aren't really important for this video um, it's the processing that I did over here I did some compression some EQ and a little bit of uh, dynamic EQ here which is you know form of compression and you know it may look like oh because there's three things on here well you know what's he talking about he's saying you know minimalistic approach but he's got all this stuff on here but each of these things is doing very very minute type of things to the actual vocal so you'll see the before and after there's not much of a difference um, again, the vocals are just a little bit tighter and a little bit more locked in after, but um, I'll play them for you right now so you can hear um, the before and after, and then I'll go through the plugins too. Again, so you hear the before vocal actually sounded pretty good. There wasn't any major problems with it. It's just after I added these plugins on here, the vocal just sort of sit into the mix a little bit better, just fit better with the sounds. So I'll go over these, but again, these aren't really important to this tour. Remember, it's again, it's about the minimalistic approach to mixing is that if you don't have to do something to a sound, don't do it. This is why I always try to preach on focusing on the balance more so than, you know, trying to focus on getting the world's greatest mix or trying to get this or that or whatever. Focus on the balance and how does it feel? Um, so anyways, with this one, I used a compressor here and you can see the ratio is very, very small here. It's 1.73 to 1. Um, and then the attack is about 4 milliseconds and the release is 390. And this is just a really as, think of it like a, almost like a ceiling in a sense where every time she would hit a certain note and she would get outside that range of what I felt was a good range for the vocals to sit dynamically. I just wanted to pull that back just a little bit. And I'm using a medium release on it because she holds notes for a certain period of time and I want this compressor to sort of hold on with that. But again, doing it very, very gently so it's not to, uh, you know, intrude on the actual performance. So I'll show you this before and after. And let's check it out, see what it sounds like. So you can see again, it's not doing much, maybe maximum about 3 dBs here is taking off. Uh, but again, it's really just to massage those peaks, just keep them in check a little bit. So you should be able to hear that without it. Um, you know, the vocals were a little bit wild in a sense and, you know, try to take that term lightly. But once I threw the compressor on, it just sort of tightened them up and kept them a little bit closer together in a more feasible dynamic range that was, you know, easier to place in the mix. After that, we got the Pro Q2 from FabFilter, and this is just, you know, taking out some of that bottom end. But actually, I have to give a shout out to Dan for hooking me up and uh, getting me onto this EQ. It's uh, I've been experimenting with it a little bit lately, and I've been really liking the results that I've been getting. So, anyways, this is really just to take out some of that bottom end, and it looks like it's a high cutoff here at uh, you know 140 hertz. 
but uh, again she's so high up in her range that she's almost not even down here at all so this is just to get rid of some of the rumble and some of the noise and stuff like that uh, so let's play this before and after Okay, so then the last thing is the side chain, the waves compressor here, which is a dynamic EQ. And there's just a tiny bit of, um, you know, well, I don't want to call it resonance, but a little low end buildup that I didn't like. But again, that was kind of pushing the vocal forward a little bit. And just by taming this a little bit, it helped me to stick it into the speakers or into the mix. And then with the effects and everything, it just enhanced that. But again, this was just to glue the mix together with the vocal right now it sounds like the vocal sitting on top of the mix and by having this there it sort of pushes it in so that it sits together with the music and you should notice this but let's listen to the before and after So again, it's very subtle. It's doing a tiny bit, you know, a dB here and there. But again, all these things add up. And that's all I did. I didn't, you don't see me adding any crazy EQ to the top end or anything like that. I mean, I do have some EQ on, on the master bus. But um, again, as far as the individual vocal, as far as the balance and the tone of the mix and, and this vocal itself, everything to me just felt like it worked. So I didn't touch it too much. Uh, but I'll add on the effects just for that, you know, wow effect, I guess you could call it. Uh, let's see what it sounds like now with those effects. And yeah, and that's it. So again, a lot of times all you need to do is just very, very small things, sometimes nothing at all. As long as the balance is there, you know, you can throw in your effects and just, you know, tweak them to perfection and, you know, the vocal should work. And in this case, I feel like it works. So that's pretty much it. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you on the next one. I said.